Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and we are in Los Angeles, California at the Society of Thoracic Surgeons Conference. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Craig Baker, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at the Keck School of Medicine at USC in Los Angeles, California. Dr. Baker, you and I have known each other for a very long time. It is great to see you here at SDS. Great to see you, Adam. Yeah, so we're here. A lot of Ross procedure discussion is going on. I know you're just coming from a wet lab where your team proctored how to do the Ross procedure. And at USC, you guys are now over 600 Ross procedures. So it's great to have this conversation with you. Big question from the patients is, who are good candidates for the Ross procedure? Yeah, great question, Adam. I mean, I think people, patients should know that the Ross procedure is something that generally treats aortic valve disease. Um, that is typically calcific aortic stenosis. Although with the inclusion technique, it's more often being used for patients with aortic regurgitation. It's a procedure that we typically do in younger patients. There's really no strict age. I think thinking in terms of somewhere around 50 years old is a reasonable cutoff, although we've done it in older patients. I think because it's typically done in patients that are younger, we see patients oftentimes with bicuspid aortic valves because they do present at a younger age. I think specifically for young patients, which would include females of childbearing age that don't want to be on lifelong anticoagulation, it's a really good operation. And obviously here I'm talking a little bit more on the adult side, but it's a fantastic operation in children who need the aortic valve replaced. Dr. Baker, thanks for sharing that very important information about who the Ross procedure may be for. At the same time, the Ross may not be a fit for other patients. Can you yeah. talk about maybe some constraints on who the Ross procedure isn't a good operation for? Yeah, great question, Adam. Well, I think if you look at the most obvious constraint, you have to have a normal pulmonary valve. You can't take out an abnormal valve from the right side of the heart, move it over to the left side and expect it's gonna do good. So we always very thoroughly inspect the pulmonary valve. And if there's any concerns about its integrity, we won't do it. I think the other thing you have to think about is this is a very complex operation. It's much different than just doing a standard aortic valve replacement with a mechanical valve or a tissue valve. So it's probably best not to do in patients that may need multiple valves because they're already getting another kind of valve already. It's probably best not to do in patients with a lot of comorbidities. If someone's also got coronary disease and maybe doesn't have the same life expectancy, we probably don't do it in those patients. I think the other group we worry about is patients with connective tissue diseases, because we're not totally certain what's gonna happen to that valve. And I think the other, the other group you consider at is that patients for whatever reason that may need lifelong anticoagulation for another reason that they're gonna be on it if they have a coagulation disorder or something like that, then probably the Ross procedures might not be the best for them. Dr. Baker, very helpful learning both the inclusion and exclusion criteria for the Ross procedure. And I've got to ask you, for the patients watching this, what is your number one piece of advice for them? Thanks, Adam. You know, I think the most important thing is, is that patients get informed. They should really understand what the Ross procedure is. They should understand if they're good candidates for it. And they should understand the complexity of the procedure. Um, it's important that patients, when they go to their surgeons, they look for a surgeon and a center that has experience in this procedure. I think for the young surgeons out there, if anyone's watching this video, you should learn this procedure from somebody that has expertise in it and probably do your first few with somebody that can help guide you. It is a procedure, not like a standard bypass operation or a standard valve that everyone learns in the course of their training. It takes a special effort to learn this from somebody like I did. Dr. Starnes taught me to do this and then you can learn the right way to do it. Well, well, that is extraordinary advice for everybody watching this. And Dr. Baker, on behalf of the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, patients all over the world, thanks to you and your team at USC for everything you are doing to help Ross procedure patients and all patients with heart valve disease. Thanks for being with me today. Thank you, Adam, my pleasure. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.